So time to start a new build. Um, today we're going to be looking at uh, Airfix 148 Curtis Tomahawk. Uh, this uh, kit is the uh, the tougher grey plastic that our Airfix sometimes use. Uh, it's uh, the, like the bluey coloured plastic. So first off, it's getting the cockpit together, uh, basically cutting, sanding, test fitting, make sure it all goes together nicely. There really is some great detail in this cockpit and it builds up to uh, look really really nice especially once you'll hopefully you'll see once it's all painted and what have you. The only downside is there's no uh, seat belts which we'll deal with later. This next part is part of the front cowling. It tells you to build up the fuselage and then glue these parts in. I decided to do it this way to make sure we could get a nice fit in case I had to uh, shim it at the back or anything like that, which I didn't need to do. For some bigger mating surfaces I like to use a white top glue by uh, Tamiya. Uh, this is because when you squeeze it together it, it sort of like uh, spills out and once it's dry you've got a natural filler so to speak. So it fills up any small gaps and then all you've got to do is just sand it. So my preferred way of doing seat belts I have some uh, foil, uh, sticky back uh, foil. Uh, that I cut into strips and I can lay them on, I can bend them to shape. There are many, many different ways to do this using tape, uh, foil off a, a wine bottle, or anything like that. This is just the way I prefer because it doesn't need glue, and I can just stick it on there and I can make it to any shape I want.
and hopefully you can see once I've finished that they actually look quite good quite realistic and they're stuck on there quite well so next up it's priming and I'm just going to use some Tamiya black for this it doesn't matter what it is uh, and with my wider nozzle airbrush so I just spray all the inside where I think there should be some uh, shadows and stuff like that just missing it on to start with and then building up the colour as we go Then we can start looking at the interior green, as it says on the thing. I'm using uh, Mr. Hobby Aqueous uh, range of paints just to put the, the base coat down. Missing it on again to start with and slowly building it up. Uh, the black on the knees should hopefully create some shadows to give us a little bit more depth. Once it's all painted, uh, I would have I've painted the black parts, the instrument panel, and now I'm just adding some detail with some gel pens. These are just cheap gel pens I got from uh, a, a store called b &M over here in the UK. Apart from the white one, the white one's a little bit more expensive. One I, I picked up from Hobbycraft, and it's really easy to just add these details with these pens. It's quite precise and you can just wipe them off before it dries and you've picked out all the detail next up i've just got a big thick brush that i use for dry brushing and i'm just lightly dry brushing over uh, the consoles just to give it a metallic look and uh, all that sort of stuff just to make it stand out a bit more I'm not doing a heavy dry brush, this is just a light dry brush uh, because I don't really like the effect. Uh, once that's done, we can start adding some uh, pigments after I'd already done a wash. So I'm just adding uh, some pigments because this is going to be a desertized uh, P40. So there's going to be lots of dust and uh, sand and stuff like that in the cockpit. And once that's done, it's time to start putting the cockpit together. Uh, this goes together really, really well. I struggle a little bit getting the actual uh, dashboard in, 
but I think that was more my hand fisted than anything else. But everything just clips into place and goes together with no fuss, really. Once that's done, it's just time to make sure it's all okay and where everything is and the, uh, the panel, as you can see, just in there. And once it's done, it'll be time to actually put it into the aircraft, which should go in fairly easy. So now I'm just going to add it to the, into the actual fuselage and there's location pins and everything, uh, well slots that it goes in, it just clicks in, lovely. Uh, same as the intake and what have you for the big chin radiators, which you'll see in a minute. And it all goes together absolutely fantastically. And then next up, we're mating up the two uh, fuselage surfaces uh, and using tape, pegs and all that sort of stuff. We're going to uh, clamp it together and it goes together really, really well. The only problem part is really around the nose area, but with some fiddling and some bits and pieces, it's really easy to get together. The rest of the build was really trouble free, uh, no filler anywhere really on this aircraft and it went together really well. So we're moving on now to the painting and I'll be using this mask set by the Crafting Well. It's uh, basically for all the markings, the roundels, the shark's mouth. So first off I've primed it, I primed it with a rattle can, a black rattle can uh, and now I am just missing on some white paint for the background to make the colours pop uh, and then we'll be probably using the mask set to add the markings.
mass set again. Okay, with all the different parts. The, the most difficult part of this is going to be the mouth. Uh, obviously, because we've got the two pieces and we want to make sure they line up correctly with the outer bit for the black bit. So using some tape, uh, I sit the tape down, peel it back, hopefully just peeling off the mouth part, which you'll see in a minute. Okay. There we are, you can see I've just peeled off the, the mouth bit. And then that bit you can then put onto the actual aircraft. He says. There we are, put it onto the aircraft, burnish it down. And then we pull the tape back, and there we've got the shark's teeth. First up, it's the red. Uh, for the uh, center of the roundels as you can see I've put some of the other markings already on there and for the tongue of the mouth so we're going to spray that first and then we'll move on to all the other colors so red first So then we're going to cover the red up with the center of the roundels or uh, with the tongue and with the on the tail for the flag uh, and then we're going to spray the the blue now these colors that i'm using for the roundels are might not be a hundred percent accurate uh, but what i have found is that there's many different uh, color call outs and what have you but these are pretty accurate to the FS numbers or the British standard numbers. And here I'm adding the tongue part of the actual mouth. Okay, over the red. There we are. making sure it's all nice and straight and burnished down so it, it, it looks right. If it's not quite right, put it back down and do it again. then it's the blue so the blue will just get misted over the top again making sure uh, I've got the right amount for the actual roundels
And then I'm going to add the black. So the black's going to go over for the for the rest of the mouth, and it's going to go over where I put the white on. So it's going to darken the white. Not I'm not going to get totally rid of it, but I want a dark base color. So this is just to uh, to get that back. So it I've got per, the tonal variation I want. Once all that's dry, I'm then going to start adding some uh, aluminium, some uh, Vallejo metal colour, so I can do some chipping. So around, around the wind roots, the leading edges of the wings, and places like where I think it might be high incidence of, of wear and tear. So next up, uh, this is still me experimenting with this technique. Okay, so I've got a jar of Marmite there and a needle. And all I'm gonna do is put that where I want the chip in. Uh, later on, uh, I will then just spray over this and then I can remove the Marmite with just water, with just the cotton bud and water. And hopefully it'll give a nice chipped effect. So the belly, I'm going to be painting with H42 from uh, Mr. Hobby Aquarius range. Now I know this is not 100% accurate uh, to the Azure Blue that uh, these aircraft would have been painted. Uh, I think it's a lot lighter in colour, but it's very hard to get a decent colour that will spray well. So you've got the Humbrol or I think is it Life, not Life Colour, uh, Estra Colour that do a really good match but it's very hard to find uh, in the rest, you know, to make it easy to, to spray. So this is what I'm using. Uh, I will then use lights and darks to uh, lighten the tone of the, uh, the original base colour and then spray this on in random patterns, all in the uh, panels, uh, darken the panel lines and all that sort of stuff. Lighter colour, colour I'm going to be using Desert Yellow XF59. Uh, just spraying this on as I would normally do where I uh, think it is, and then I'll be going through the same process of lightening and darkening panels and places like that.
once all the post shading is done i will put a really thin coat over the top of it to uh, just tone everything back down uh, next up after masking off is the darker brown and again this is going to take the same principle so i'm going to put the base coat on lighten the panels and then on the panel lines darken it and then add a coat over the top of that to tone everything back down So I'm just adding the white to the center of the panels to give me some random uh, spots uh, all over in the center of the panels, wherever I deem I think it needs. Now I'm using a darker colour to add to the panel lines. So this will help shade the panel lines in areas just to give that, uh, again, just breaking it up so it's not all one brick colour. There you can see the darker and the lighter tones and now I'm going over it all with a really thin misty coat of the original colour just to bring it all together so it's you know it, it's random but it looks weird and there's plenty of tonal variation.
and hopefully you can see the masking has actually turned out really really well I'm really happy with that all right it's time to remove the ma uh, the marmite so just with a damp wet cotton bud and then you can see it's just wiping off just with water leaving what I hope you can see is quite a realistic effect Moved. We've got lovely chipping all over the wing roots and what have you. Once uh, I have put a gloss coat on the aircraft, I am then going to use a wash. And I'm just using a, a natural or neutral wash, should I say, by MIG. Uh, I've had this really a long time, so it's just a really quick and easy solution. Once this has been put on, I'll leave it to dry and then I'll wipe it off. Uh, and we should be left with some nice panelizer, some dirt across the airframe. Now you can use uh, a piece of kitchen paper or whatever you, that's got some turps or some white spirit or some something like that to wipe it off. But I just tend to use a dry uh, piece of kitchen paper unless it's really really ingrained. Then I'll wet it and, and remove it. But I feel that it gives it a more natural look because then you've got dirt not just in the panel lines. But you've got, you know, your first layer of weathering, a bit of dirt all over the place. I then put a matte coat on it. Uh, I am going to be using these oils now for a dot filter. So you can see it's got a nice matte coat on it. And I'm just gonna dob these on all over the place. And then with a damp uh, brush with some thinner, I'm gonna blend it all in to give me some more fading over the aircraft. The effect won't finish, it'll be really, really subtle, uh, but it'll give you again some more tonal variation uh, to the wings and fuselage and places like that.
going to add some finer chips and I'm using some watercolour pencils, both metallic and uh, normal, okay? Uh, using them dry and using them wet. So you've got to make sure you get the right sort of colour. So all I'm doing is just adding scratches and chips, uh, like the tone. Uh, again, just to add a little bit of interest all over the airframe. Once that's done, I'll then get the metal one and maybe go into the centre of those ones where I've, I've already put it in, just to have chip into uh, inside the chips I already do to make fine scratches all over where I believe they should be. So there's the airframe with some scratches, some muck added with oils and now I'm going to add some uh, different tones with some pastels, some chalks and what have you. I won't be using all these but I will be using some of them. So these are all in my art collection that I thought I'd give a go and try with this uh, build. So first off we've got a, uh, I think I believe I'm going to use the pastel one and I've got a blending stump and some just ladies makeup sponge type things so on the bottom as you can see I've already started just with a, a charcoal and then I'm gonna use the makeup sponge and just drag that down to give me the uh, the look of uh, where the cases come out of the, the shoes I'm also going to use it to add some dirt around the wing root. So as you can see, I'm just drawing it on uh, and then I'll blend that in again with the ladies makeup sponge. This could be done with a, a normal sponge or a brush or whatever you, you feel uh, you'd like to use. So I've added some dirt around the exhausts and all that sort of stuff again using the charcoal pen and blending it in just to make it a little bit grimy a little bit dirty once all that's done uh, adding the wheels on the carriage and uh, doing the exhaust stage, the aircraft's now done, the model's done. And I'm fairly happy how this has turned out. Uh, again, I've used some new techniques. Uh, and uh, hopefully you can see that, that they have worked. Uh, and I'm really happy how the masking has come out. Anyway, that's it for now. I will see you on the next one. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Thank you for now. Bye.